Back in the 13th century, there was a mathematician by the name of Fibonacci. And Fibonacci constructed what is called a Fibonacci series. Now you can see this on the screen. It's a very simple thing. In the Fibonacci series, you add one number to the next number to get the next number. So as you look at the screen, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 8 is 13, 13 plus 8 is 21, 13 plus 21 is 34, and on and on and on. You can follow the sequence across. And Fibonacci pointed out some interesting things there, that if you divide, for instance, 144 by 233, and you get the number 0 0.618034. And if you divide 55 by 89, you get the same ratio. What's interesting about this is that architects took Fibonacci's material and they started constructing various kinds of objects, buildings, things that had particular design features. And one of the things they found was that you get what is called pleasing rectangles if you use the Fibonacci scale. So if you look at the rectangle at the bottom of the screen, you'll notice that the length and the width of it have a certain ratio. And for instance, if you made the length of the thing 13 feet and made the width of it, or the height of it as you're looking at the screen, 8 feet, you would have Fibonacci numbers. And this would be called a Fibonacci rectangle. Now, if you're like a lot of my high school students, they say, so what? Well, that leads to some interesting things. For instance, if you cut a square off a Fibonacci rectangle, What's left is another Fibonacci rectangle. Mathematicians love this kind of stuff. So you see all kinds of things written about how the Fibonacci sequence works. You can also construct what is called a Fibonacci spiral. And what architects have found is that people not only find the Fibonacci rectangle aesthetically appealing, but they also find that the spiral that you can construct off a Fibonacci rectangle is aesthetically appealing. And we build staircases out of Fibonacci spirals. We use Fibonacci spirals for decorations on things. We have all kinds of artistic things in which Fibonacci spirals have been used because people like and enjoy Fibonacci spirals. But you know who else apparently enjoys Fibonacci spirals? Apparently God does. Because the Fibonacci spiral occurs over and 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 over in nature. We see curves in nature that match the equation that you see right now on the screen. Let me give you some illustrations of this. When you go out into space and you look at a galaxy, in this picture you're looking at is a galaxy which is called a spiral galaxy. What you find is that the arms of this galaxy curve with exactly the same curvature that you saw in the Fibonacci spiral in the last frame. The mathematical equation which describes the arms of this galaxy fit the equation for the Fibonacci curve perfectly. When you look at a wave, you find that the curl of the wave matches the Fibonacci spiral perfectly. If you took a Fibonacci spiral and set it on this wave, it would fit exactly. The equation of the curve of the wave is exactly what the Fibonacci equation says. You watch water go down the drain, counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, clockwise in the southern hemisphere. You know what the first thing I did was when I got to Australia? <laughs> yeah, went in the men's restroom, pulled the plug. Sure enough, the water went down the drain the wrong way. Well, actually, that force is too weak for that to be reliable. But nonetheless, the point is that water goes down the drain in a Fibonacci spiral. The equation describes perfectly what's happening. Now somebody says, eh, all right, you, you got a gravitational something or other going on here. No, 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 no. Because when you have zero gravity and you have subatomic particles, they curl with a Fibonacci spiral. When you balance gravity by buoyancy, like in seashells, the curve of the shell is a Fibonacci curve. The equation describes it perfectly. That's true in fossil forms. It's also true in modern living forms. As a matter of fact, in your own garden, you can go out and see Fibonacci spirals in the snails in your garden. You see Fibonacci spirals in the horns of every living thing you can imagine. All of the different animals that inhabit the earth use Fibonacci spirals for the curvature of their horns. And that's also been true in the past because fossil forms show the very same thing. 
When you take a look at the curl of the teeth of a groundhog, it curls with a Fibonacci spiral. When you look at the curl of the teeth of a grizzly bear, it curls with a Fibonacci spiral. When you look at the beak of every bird you can imagine, they all curl with a Fibonacci spiral. When you look at the tail of a chameleon, it curls with a Fibonacci spiral. When you look at the vines of pumpkins and potatoes and tomatoes, they all curl with a Fibonacci spiral. When you take a look at the petals of a magnolia, they curl with a Fibonacci spiral. When you look at sunflower seeds, they curl with a Fibonacci spiral. When you look at the back of a pine cone, it curls with a Fibonacci spiral. When you look at a fingerprint, the pattern of the fingerprint curls with a Fibonacci spiral. On the floor of the ocean, there's a living thing called a Christmas tree worm, and its plankton straining mechanisms spiral up with Fibonacci spirals. The proboscis of a moth curls with a Fibonacci spiral. A spider web curls with a Fibonacci spiral. The brain has Fibonacci curvatures in it. Chlorotella algae inside the little algae fragments has Fibonacci spirals. The DNA helix has a Fibonacci spiral. We see the Fibonacci spiral in the cochnea of the inner ear. We see the Fibonacci spiral in the umbilical cord of a baby. Are you picking up a pattern?